Uh, the court got it wrong, simply. What they did was they usurped the power of the people. We the people elect the legislators. The legislators make the laws. As a judge, it would be my role to interpret that law, not change it. That's why we have a system of checks and balances. And um, it just, it wasn't good. And what ended up happening was they did get their supermajority. And I think this decision was scary from the perspective that if this could be done, then what else would the court involve itself in, in almost a paternalistic or maternalistic sense, depending on the composition of the court, but to come in and say, well, you know, I think that the voters didn't really appreciate what they voted on twice to amend the Constitution to include this piece of that section of the law. It's, it's almost condescending, and uh, no matter what a judge thinks of the law, that has to be put aside. That's why we're nonpartisans. That's why we sit as un base, unbiased jurists. And we, I would try to come to the best, unbiased, and fair decision on any matter that would come in front of me. Thank you. Justice Maupin and his two dissents, because they didn't just do it once, they agreed with themselves the second time. <laughs> <clears throat> after the supermajority was met, uh, Justice Moppa uh, suggested that they should have simply not acted. Do you agree? Again, Christine Kazemka. Yeah, I think they should have not acted. It's like going to the United States Supreme Court when they deny cert. Perhaps they could have done that in this situation, or they could have said, you know, you're not at a consensus now, but go back and try it again, because that gives full um, credence to what the people elected to have done in our state. And I don't think it's up to seven people to change that. Thank you. Ditto. What else are we doing on time? Time for questions? We got... To answer your question, uh, Travis, we're at uh, 243. We got two minutes, but for uh, Department 7, we only have one candidate here because the other one uh, called in with an emergency. So we we got a little bit of time because uh, I'm sure all five of you are going to be able to grill the uh, single candidate uh, in enough time. So go ahead. Fair enough. Travis Barrick here. Uh, why is it important to identify veterans when they first come into the judicial system? Personally, I, I think that we need to identify them because I think that there may be different aspects or different concerns that, that they have. Um, with All I can go on is, 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 in a, is history. And I'm, I'm real fearful that that um, when we start seeing our veterans that are current veterans, not necessarily the, the, the veterans like you people that are you know, the older and, and been a little bit more um, relaxed, so to speak, in our, in, in our community, individuals are gonna face some tremendous changes in their lives when they're, when they're released. I know the military does what they can to, to help them, to release them, and um, I guess discharge them is the better word. Um, but. I think that uh, I think there's going to be a lot of concerns that may go with we may be looking at somebody with um, uh, issues of the you know the uh, what do you call the I'm, I'm lost PTSD. with words but what was that PTSD. yeah post traumatic stress disorder that's what I was trying to get at and um, but there's a lot more things that go with that I mean they, they may be indulging in drugs they may be indulging in alcohol and and uh, they may have some uh, uh, anger issues, they may have some self-discipline -dis issues. And um, Something that I've always said, and uh, something that I'm, I'm, I'm very committed to this, is that during my career, I've met 
thousands of people, I've prosecuted thousands of people. And a big majority of them are pretty good people. It's just that they lack some kind of structure. So I've been very a big proponent of the military because I think the military gives a lot of young men that structure. And um, I think when, the, when we let them go or discharge them, they're going to be right back in there and have lose that, lack that structure. I know that there's a lot of support groups within the military themselves, kind of like this group right here, that, the, that they can come to and, and discuss concerns and that. But, but a many, many of the military, I think, are very proud individuals that, that see, uh, I don't want to say disablements, or, but see uh, concerns that they have as a weakness, and they don't want, they don't want to bring that up with, amongst, their, amongst their fellow Marines or, or, or uh, uh, naval individuals. Um, but so the court has to, in my opinion, the court has to recognize or ha I think has to uh, realize that, that we're, not look, we're not dealing with a normal individual in the sense that, that he's been out or she's been out in the sense of being able to make different choices and haven't had the effects on the military that the military has given them. And um, so if we can see them and catch them early or see them in the beginning and let them understand that we recognize that there's some additional concerns above and beyond somebody else that hasn't gone through the same uh, conflicts or, cons or discipline issues with the military, um, then I think that they may take a little bit more, uh, uh, be more respectful in the sense that it may, it may help them to the point where I'm, I'm not telling my fellow Marine buddy that, that I had a problem last night and, you know, with, with um, um, slapping my wife or something. I'm telling the courts, and, and the courts aren't, aren't uh, um, they're going to treat me more with an understanding towards it than just, uh, uh, they may have worse time in there with their own buddies. And, um, so I, I wanted to I want to see if we can recognize it early, to the point that um, I was talking to Steve before. I, I think the military ought to be involved as well in some regards. I'd like to see if we could open open up a dialogue amongst some of the military to help with some of the resources. Um, I spoke to Steve about a situation involving maybe the military kind of intervening again with uh, people that um, are looking at maybe getting a conviction in that. When I first started, it was pretty pretty common to have a young man come in there with some kind of indiscretion. You know, he, he stole somebody's car or something, and, and we'd make a decision based on support that he's had here that, hey, you know, maybe the good idea here is you go in the military. Now, they, the, the whole case has to be completed. You know, you can't, you can't even, they, they won't even talk to him anymore. And, and um, I think maybe the military has recognized some of their saying, well, the courts are throwing the, the, the bad ones on us. But I think that, that we've, I've, I've seen some big turnarounds from some of those young men that have come back later and said, you know, you really changed my life and that. And I think if you can catch them early and see that, and have them to get respect with the court, you can get to them a little bit better. That, that's what my purpose is. I know it took forever. I could talk forever on this. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Okay.